Benitez Vito. Welcome to Southeast Asia Speaks. This is the show where I get to interview resource persons on, and newsmakers on issues affecting the region. I will be speaking to Kasit Piromia, Thailand's former foreign minister, on the Myanmar crisis and the failure of ASEAN to restore stability to the country. Mr. Piromia is also a board member of the ASEAN Parliamentarian for Human Rights. Today, he will be joining us from Bangkok. And also today, February 17th, as we speak, the ASEAN foreign ministers are supposed to start their meeting with the shadow of Myanmar hanging uh, over them. And they're supposed to meet in Cambodia without the participation of Myanmar. So to our live audience, you can send in your questions via the comment section, comment section of Facebook. Thank you, Kuntasit, for making time for this interview. Thank you for the invitation and greetings from Bangkok to all of you. Yes, we're, we have, we're so privileged to speak to you today. Uh, you were foreign minister from 2008 to 2011, and Thailand helped Myanmar at the time into its path to hybrid democracy. Now, one year after the coup, ASEAN seems to have failed to restore stability in Myanmar. What happened? What has happened, sir? I think uh, ASEAN collectively was good when it had a common purpose. For example, the original five members of ASEAN plus Brunei 30 years ago had one common ideology, namely to oppose the expansion of communism. Then after the end of the Cold War, the original members of ASEAN and the newly members of ASEAN came together to participate in the globalization process of open market economy and multilateralism. And ASEAN as a whole, ASEAN of the 10 member states, professed to be the world center for production, for tourism and so on. So there were common ideologies, common purpose. So ASEAN was purposeful. But now with the Myanmar crisis of the past one year as a result of the end of democracy through the coup d'etat by the military junta of Myanmar, ASEAN has not been in the position to handle an internal conflict. And it is not in the position to handle the question of democracy and human rights. For the very mere fact that most of the member states of ASEAN are not so democratic. Most of them have authoritarian leaning. So in that sense, it would be very difficult for ASEAN collectively to handle first the conflict situation of a civil war-like situation, and second, to handle the restoration of democracy. So there is more or less an inherent structural difficulty within the ASEAN mm -hmm. community because of the different political setup and the lack of a common stand on democracy and human rights. So you mean, Kun Kasit, uh, you mean, sir, that you don't see a way forward in the current setup of ASEAN. Is this a dead end for peace in Myanmar? No, not, not that dead end. I'm not that pessimistic. Okay. But I still believe that if some of the original members of ASEAN were to take an interest to help solve the Myanmar crisis, I think some of them would be in the position to do so. And in that sense, I point my figure at the leadership of Indonesia as the largest member of ASEAN, as the original founder of ASEAN, as the most democratic ASEAN member state and as the most prosperous and democratic Islamic country. So Indonesia is in the position to provide some sort of leadership and to control or to push the ASEAN member state to come together to try to work together to solve the Myanmar crisis. So it needs some sort of a vision and leadership on the part of the Indonesian administration. I think that could be done. So what specifically, Kun Kasit, what can Indonesia do concretely? There, it's not I, the leader of ASEAN, it's uh, Cambodia, is, but what can it do concretely to help Myanmar restore, help restore stability in Myanmar? I think Indonesia 
president can pronounce the leadership that it is willing to work with the current ASEAN chair and the other ASEAN members to help to solve the Myanmar crisis, to push the five-point consensus and to finally restore democracy back to Myanmar. So that leadership could be undertaken by Indonesia. Second, the president of Indonesia can have a one-to-one -one talk with each of the ASEAN leaders in Brunei, in Thailand, and so on. He could appoint a sort of a special envoy for Myanmar crisis to work closely with the ASEAN chair, currently is Cambodia, and also to work with the UN special envoy, representative of the UN secretary uh, general. So with the initiative and the leadership of, uh, of Indonesia, it will carry worth, worth a, lot of, a lot of weight in the ASEAN community and in the, in the international community as a whole, especially within the UN context. And at the same time, today to now, for the next two years, uh, Indonesia will be in the chair of the G20. That provides also, I think, the venue for Indonesia to show its mantle and its leadership. Sir, have you heard feedback from Indonesia on what, how far it is willing to go to help in this crisis? I think this idea about pushing Indonesia to assume the mantle of leadership was only being I think discussed informally among members of parliaments of ASEAN and so on. I did have some discussion with my, I think, Indonesian counterparts, politicians and so on. And I think we at the ASEAN Parliamentarian for Human Rights, I think will come out with a sort of a draft, a working paper to be submitted to the Indonesian leadership for them to consider and to finally decide to take the leadership of ASEAN in trying to solve overcoming the Myanmar crisis. That is to help the Cambodia as the current chair of ASEAN to do the work as the chair and to do the collective, I think, undertaking by ASEAN community as a whole. There was just a news report today, sir, quoting Hun Sen, who was so frustrated about uh, what's happening in Myanmar, that the inability of ASEAN to help resolve the crisis, he sort of, gave, is he giving up or, or he says he's finding a middle ground? What could be this middle ground? What does ASEAN think is a middle ground? Well, I, I, before answering the, the, my definition of middle ground, I, I would have to comment a bit that uh, some that Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of Cambodia, only came into the chairmanship of ASEAN Valley two months. And his initial meeting with the junta, the Tamador leadership of Myanmar, only occurred a few weeks ago. And he cannot give up after two months attempt to help solve the Myanmar crisis. Hun Sen is a very seasoned uh, politician, you know, went through the civil war in Cambodia and went through so many hardships of trying to lead Cambodia. I think he, he must show more of the resilience and the stamina to lead the collective will and voice of ASEAN. I think he should not give up. I think it's not right for him to give up. For the man who has been in power for 30 years and so on, I think it would be unbecoming for Hun Sen just simply to give up. And the fact that is he's giving up because at the beginning, two months ago, he was trying to solve the Myanmar crisis by himself without the, I think, consulting with the other ASEAN leaders, without giving due respect to the other ASEAN leaders who had come together to, uh, I think, to come out with this, the five-point consensus. And Hun Sen, I think a few weeks ago, was trying to do it alone. And he thought that he has the stamina and the, I think, the aura to push and to convince the Myanmar military junta to come to his way. But I think he was too, too fast, too abrupt in his undertaking. And to fail one time, I think you have to keep on trying for another 10 and 15 times. But you cannot do it alone. ASEAN is a collective organization. It needs a collective leadership. And uh, Hun Sen must be patient with himself. He should have, you know, consulted the president of Indonesia as the biggest member of ASEAN. He should have consulted the, with the Sultan of Brunei, the previous chair just three months ago, before he decided to venture to Nepidor to meet the junta uh, leadership and so on. So there must be a bit of a more sophistication and the refinement in doing this diplomatic work. And you cannot behave like a child that 
once you don't get your lollipop and then you want to give up everything together. No, he has the responsibility to himself, to the Cambodian people, to the honor of Cambodia, and he has the responsibility to the ASEAN community as a whole. It is not too late and it is not, I think the time is still available. He still have almost 10 months to go as chairman. And if he could work very closely with the Indonesian president, I am quite optimistic that we could move forward to help solve the Myanmar crisis. Very interesting point you made, sir, about uh, lack of consultation done by Hun Sen. And now that he said something about finding a middle ground, when it's time he should go back and consult with the other uh, leaders in ASEAN. I think the middle ground from what I could read his mind is about finding a compromise between the military junta and the uh, democratic opposition forces of Myanmar. What is the middle ground? But you have to look into the larger context that the middle ground would not work because now all the democratic forces of Myanmar, the uh, Burman majority ethnic group and all the minorities like the Chan, the Karen, the Kachin, even the Rohingyas and so on, they have come together to oppose any more involvement of the military in the political life of the Myanmar uh, people. So uh, it's a different thing. In the middle part, from my understanding, uh, reading Hun Sen's mind is about trying to uh, compromise between the military junta and the democratic forces of Myanmar. That is no longer valid because the Myanmar people collectively, they are telling the world to telling the ASEAN community that Myanmar must be a democratic country. And that what, what it means a democratic country is no involvement of bureaucrats, military officers in the political life of a democratic country. And Hun Sen have to take heed of the wishes of the majority of the Myanmar people and work with the majority of the Myanmar people with the democratic forces to make the military junta of Myanmar understand that their days are numbered. They are not wanted in the political life of Myanmar. It's no more. They have been in control of the 60 years out of 70 years of independence of Myanmar too long, and it did not bring any progress, development, or the betterment of life or to the freedom of life to the Myanmar people. They have been a very suppressive and repressive regime uh, that they are numbered. And Hun Sen must understand this so that he could, you know, stop talking about the middle path and work for democratization process of the Myanmar uh, uh, country. Sir, is that realistic to expect from Hun Sen, who is uh, as an authoritarian leader? Uh, his country is not a democracy. Uh, well, is that really, yeah? well, but uh, looking back 10 years ago, Hun Sen was still in power and I was foreign minister at that time. And I think Thailand, Cambodia, and the other uh, seven, eight members of ASEAN were able to work together collectively to return democracy to Myanmar in the course of the year, I think 2010-11, with a new constitution, with referendum on the constitution, and finally the national elections for Myanmar. So Hun Sen and myself, and I think many ASEAN uh, leaders and so on, we did work together to bring back democracy to Myanmar more than 10 years ago. So and at that time, Hun Sen was also autocrat, very authoritarian, having full control of Cambodia. But he did work and make contribution to the return of democracy to Myanmar. Then why not to do it for the second time now? OK, very good. From your vantage point, it's a very rich perspective you bring into this discussion. Uh, the question also, Hun Kasit, is that uh, the ASEAN foreign ministers are starting to meet today, or was it yesterday, or February 17? What, yes. are, what are your expectations from this well, meeting? I, I have to draw from my own personal experiences as a for, former foreign minister of Thailand. And then at that time, more than 10 years ago, I think we worked together as a team and at that time, for, for whatever crisis within uh, ASEAN, we did not appoint a special envoy, like what they have done today to, spoil, to appoint a special envoy from the chair of ASEAN for the Myanmar crisis. The 10 foreign ministers were working together as a team 
and come out with a collective decision. So the meeting of the foreign minister of ASEAN organized and hosted by Hun Sen of Cambodia, you know, yesterday, today, and so on, should work for the collective decision and to push forward the five-point consensus. I think, and there are, I think, two very important uh, points out of the five-point consensus. First, to make it clear to the military junta of Myanmar to end the violence immediately. This is what has to, to, to be done, to end. And second, you know, is to stop harassing the people and release the political prisoners and come to the negotiating table. And third, they could also reprimand the military junta of Myanmar that so far we have suspended you from participating at the ASEAN ministerial meeting. But if you still continue with their violence, the nine foreign ministers of ASEAN could reprimand the military junta of Myanmar that you might be, I think, a meeting with targeted sanction. You, we could withdraw our business activities from you and end the association with the uh, military enterprises and so on. And we could come out with uh, uh, not only sa uh, uh, sanction, but to suspend your uh, membership of ASEAN. So there are so many things to do. You can list up what things could be done by the ASEAN collectively towards the military junta as long as they don't end the violence and do not come to the negotiating table under the auspices of the ASEAN leadership, either with Indonesia or together with Cambodia and so on. The armored forces, the Tamador, the military junta must sit down with the NDL, with the opposition democratic forces of Myanmar. And I think uh, Thailand uh, as a nearby country could would be the venue with a lot of UN agencies here based in Bangkok. You you raise a very interesting point, sir, about united a united ASEAN. These foreign ministers can act collectively and uh, in unity. But the, some reports have been coming out in the press here in the region about Cambodia as the leader of ASEAN is testing the unity of the organization. Is that an act a fair assessment? Well, so far, a fair, but I think uh, Hun Sen would have to realize the truth that he cannot go it alone. Second, there has been opposition uh, to his behavior because the, uh, the, uh, the, what you call the, the scheduled ASEAN foreign minister meeting a few weeks ago were, were being postponed because the ASEAN through their foreign minister were expressing displeasure at the, I think, unilateral measures and uh, and the solo undertaking by Somdet Hun Sen. He, should, he is clever enough, he is experienced enough. Politically, he should learn the lesson and come around and work within the collective, uh, I think, uh, leader, collective togetherness and leadership of ASEAN. Yes. So I'm, I'm not giving up. I think Hun Sen is experienced enough to know the limits of power, the limits of unilateral measures, and so on. Yes, also another point you raise is about the possibility of ASEAN suspending a member like Myanmar. This has never happened before, Kun Kasit, right? If ever, yes. this will be the first. And is there a, a boldness now in ASEAN to do such a thing? Well, if Indonesia professed to be a very advanced democratic Muslim country, then why not? And uh, Indonesian leadership in ASEAN is a natural thing. I think Indonesian leadership has to try and try to speak to the rest of ASEAN that to work together to return democracy in spite of the fact that most of the ASEAN member states are not yet democratic. Never mind. But it's a good starting point. And democracy is good for Brunei people, it's good for Vietnamese people, it's good for everyone, it's good for the people. It is not good for the, I think, authoritarian leadership, too bad, too bad, you know. But everyone has to think about the people, the aspiration of the people, the freedom of the people should come into the fore. And Hun Sen has to realize he cannot go on being autocratic. And when he dies, you know, his sons and daughters will not be able to hold Cambodia together. He should realize that reality. They don't have the power, the stamina or the experience.
to continue this authoritarianness of the Cambodian society. There are democratic forces within Cambodia. There is the aspiration for freedom and openness among the Cambodian people. That is the real force. And the rest of the ASEAN leadership must realize that, that authoritarianism, totalitarianism, autocracy, and so on is a temporal, temporary measures. It's a things of the past. It doesn't go well with this very modern, digitalized, globalized world. You, you wrote last year uh, an opinion piece saying that ASEAN should be transformed or replaced. Can you talk a bit about the group that you founded, Southeast Asia Community, or is it feasible to replace ASEAN, or how will, should it be transformed? I think when ASEAN was founded in 1967 by the founders, you know, foreign ministers and like President Suharto and Adam Malik of Indonesia and so on, or Dr. Thanat Koman, my foreign ministers, and so on, in 1967. I think ASEAN came together and joined a common front against the expansion of communism. And second, to opt for the market economy against state plan economy and so on. So there were two ideologies, market economy, capitalism, and I think anti-communism. And there was no requirement for the type of regime of the member state of ASEAN. But now, after 50 years, openness, democracy, human rights have become, I think universal values have become the name of the game. And ASEAN as a whole, each of the ASEAN member has to become more democratic, more open. You know, uh, suppression of the people is no longer valid in this modern world. And the Myanmar crisis has proven that because of the different political setup and regimes, that's why we could not have come to the consensus and that is split within ASEAN among the more authoritarian leaning and the more progressive member state of ASEAN like Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore and the Philippines but Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam and Thailand are not and so on. So and Brunei is still an absolute monarchy. So we cannot go on having, I think, different political ideologies and political regimes and so on. We have to find a common ground. I think all of us become authoritarian, one party <laughs> system, you know, or we have to go to the multi party system. We have to choose one to the other to move ASEAN collectively forward with a common ideology. So that's my point that with this mix up, you know, you are not a cat and you are not a dog, you are not what and so on. It cannot go on, uh, I think, uh, running ASEAN ahead. So the Myanmar crisis has really uh, put forth a challenge for ASEAN, not only to resolve the crisis, but to look at itself as an organization. And uh, your, your idea of a Southeast Asia community, how is it being... Um, received among Southeast Asians? Not so far, not so good. We have been trying talking to political parties. We have talked to so many of the ASEAN study centers at various universities. We talk to the media. And we talk also to some of the political parties. So far, there have not been much of the reaction. Some NGOs, about 30, 40 NGOs from ASEAN country, they, they pick up and so on. So it's still at its very inception. And I think it's been hindered also, I think, by the Myanmar crisis and by the COVID. But I think we are regrouping among the, I think, the original thinkers of Southeast Asia community based on universal values. And I'm still working at that. I have not given up as yet, but we'll, we'll push forward. But ASEAN as East cannot go on. It cannot uh, meet the challenges of uh, climate change, of terrorism, of extremism, and I think military coup d'etat. We have to have a common ideology like what the European Union has, or even to a lesser extent, the organization of the African Union. You know, Africa, African people, friends of all people. You know, when a country, a member country, uh, destroy democracy, that particular country membership is being suspended. They are much more advanced than we in Southeast Asia. It's shameful. 
we should have been much more advanced or on an equal par with them. And so we had to push, move for uh, uh, an open ASEAN community with democracy as the, I think, the political ideals and the political uh, reality. On that note, uh, optimistic note and very bold idea of the possible suspension of a member of ASEAN, which hasn't happened before, but which, as you said, the African Union has already uh, done to uh, yes. in the past. So it's one, very one, 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 one last point I forgot. I think we, all the ASEAN member states now, having talked to the military junta, they have to talk to the NUG, the National Unity Government, to provide this uh this balance and i want to go back to hun sen's statement on the middle path the middle path that would be practical is for hun sen as chair of asean must speak not only to the military junta but also to the nug i think that would provide the first step of this middle path and a road to reconciliation and the return of democracy sorry to intervene but i think i cannot no. miss this very important point yeah no it's a very important point because no one among the ASEAN uh, leaders has met with the NUG. That's a shame. That shows that you don't have the guts and the courage and the belief on what is right, what is appropriate, what is legitimate. NUG is a legitimate entity. Most of them are elected members. They participated in the political process. They have been denied democracy and so on. So it's shameful if ASEAN leaders do not talk to the leadership of NUG. And in that sense, I think I would like to extend to all members of the United Nations also. The UN Secretary General and the UN Special Envoy for Myanmar must speak officially and openly with the NUG to provide that balancing act, to provide that middle part, and be, I think, uh, to provide the, uh, the auspicious for the uh, opposing side in Myanmar to have a venue to speak to one another. The UN could do this together with the ASEAN Special Envoy or with the ASEAN Collective Leadership or with the ASEAN Foreign Ministers. Yes, thank you so much, Kun Kasi. Thank you, sir, for uh, enlightening us on this very hot issue. And we really look forward to uh, your your thoughts and your voice getting louder in the region so that uh, there will be a push to restore stability and normalcy in Myanmar. So thank you okay. to our viewers yeah. and listeners. Any parting words, sir? No, just uh, keep safe and well, every one of you. Okay, uh, thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.